This is Michael Seibel with Dalton Caldwell, and today we're going to talk about how OpenAI is going to kill all startups. Yeah. This is our last video. Might as well pack it in. <laughs> we're done. <laughs> OpenAI is going to do this. They're going to make the videos next. They year. are. Yes. <laughs> we're the no next job. video. <laughs> next video will be. AI Skynet. Dalton and AI Michael. Yeah, AI, you're right. <laughs> Doing our video for yes. us. And do a better job than us. Yes. What do they call it? It's not a deep fake. It's like a complete AI recreation. Of yes. It. Yes. We're done. Well, it's been fun. So let's talk about how that <laughs> happened. Right? So I think that to start, people need to understand that companies like OpenAI, Anthropic, et cetera, they're actually trying to build AGI. They're not trying to build the AI-powered CRM. Yeah. or better search or da -da, like they're trying to build AGI and this is not a debate we're not going to talk about yeah, we whether don't... they're going to succeed at building AGI yeah there's <laughs> plenty of videos and there's plenty of yes. experts that are better experts than us to yes. debate whether AGI is about to be created and yes. I kind of bring this up uh, if you're at a Godwin's law please kind of, in an internet debate when there's people arguing with each other and one person calls the other person um, a Nazi the debate is over and no, no good There's discourse. There's nothing productive after nothing, that. It, it, it just means it's over. Yeah. And so where I'm going with this is once we, once we start talking about how AI could become God yeah. and we have Skynet and like take all the things and we're going to be uploaded to the matrix, I'm arguing nothing useful will happen. Like that no. conversation is over without. We person. can't help you <laughs> in this video We don't about know. That. Yeah, this is, this is outside, you know, whether or not Skynet is coming is outside the nope. scope of this video. And, and we would love to talk about it, but just we don't have the expertise. Yeah, we're not, the, there's, they should listen. Yeah, yeah someone else is the expert on that, not us. Yes. Um, so what can we talk about then? I think it's this, there's a lot of history to learn from about when major technological changes have come out. Yeah. And to the extent this is a major technological change, as opposed to we're all gonna get uploaded to the matrix or whatever. Yeah. Um, there's a lot to learn from history. Yes. And so this is where when, when founders do ask us advice on what they should be thinking about with AI or how will AI affect their startups or is open AI going to kill all their startups? Yeah. We have a lot to say about that or we have a lot of suggestions to yes. look from history. Yes. So why don't you list some of the... Yeah. So, I mean, when you look at major innovations, right, talk about farming or modern farming, you talk about electricity, you talk about the internet. I think what's been so interesting as a trend is how many businesses it's enabled right? Like the number of businesses increased. And then the second trend is how startups were relatively advantaged versus incumbents. Like the greater the technology change in the shorter the period of time, the more the startups are advantaged. And like the whole history of the internet is, is amazing. There's a whole industry around starting, about funding startups because so many innovations happen so quickly and so many companies are disrupted so quickly. So there is clear, clear precedent to a major new technology trend creating opportunity for startups. If history repeats, as it tends to, somebody who's smart is looking at these tools today saying, holy crap, real problems can be solved right now that couldn't be solved six to 12 months ago. I think it's interesting because you're seeing this in a lot of conversations with founders right now, right? Like, yeah. let's talk about who is choosing to start a company in this phase and what we can learn from them. Yeah, a couple of things. So one, there's a difference between cargo culting AI <laughs> and actually using AI to build better features. Yes. And so let's talk about the difference. Cargo culting AI is to say, we have AI. And it's like tangential to what you're doing. You're just saying it to raise money. Yeah. It doesn't help your customers. It doesn't improve your product, whatever. Yes. But we are seeing people add AI features yeah. that dramatically increase retention, that yeah. dramatically increase the quality of the product, that yeah. are make it much easier to charge for it. And that stuff is real. And that is not hype. That's not bullshit. No. That's real. Yes. This is like when people first started launching apps. Yeah. When the App Store came out, yeah. apps were actually good. Yes. It was, there was a hype cycle around apps, and a lot of people were cargo holding apps. Yeah. But building a high quality mobile app that increased the retention of your users, incredible. Facebook almost died because they didn't do it fast enough. Exactly. Yeah. I think if you look at, I don't know, we saw from, from our generation's founders, we saw open source and cloud computing come out. And think about yes. cloud computing. Yeah. If someone was like, oh, this cloud computing thing's hype, or like, we're not going to add cloud computing because it's, it's just a thing VCs want to hear. You know what I'm saying? Like there were yeah. sometimes people, you remember <laughs> yes, these people, they were like yes. haters on cloud computing yeah. because it was overly hyped. Yeah. But that's missing the plot. Yeah. <laughs> just because it was overly hyped didn't mean you shouldn't put Give on your thinking it. cap. Well, exactly. it didn't mean you should be like, hey, should we be running some of this stuff in the cloud instead of running our own servers? Yeah. Well, and I think that this is a big, there's a big difference. And we've now seen both, right? Yep. I think that we've seen the kind of FinTech boom and the 
crypto boom where the people attracted to them were slightly different. Yeah. And as tools, they just weren't as useful. Whereas, you know, like giving everyone a neobank, like for every single flavor. Whereas like we also saw literally during our lifetimes, launching a website with like closed source expensive tools would cost 5 million bucks. Yep. And then with the s similar tools that were better and open source would cost like $50,000. We built our companies on MySQL. Well, that was the yes. Day. Well, like, Postgres, but yeah. You did yes. Postgres? Okay. We did Postgres, right. yeah. Well. <laughs> Ruby Fair Postgres, enough. but okay. regardless, like that shift happened. And then I remember when like you had to buy servers and then wait for them to come and then configure them and then have to get more space in the colo. Like the speed of actually building software was and incredible. Some people were like, we're going to keep buying server. Like, like some people rejected that. Yeah. And so there was a moment in time where it was, didn't make sense to jump on the wag bandwagon and start we were using on, We AWS. were on the bandwagon. <laughs> but it was actually smart. It wasn't yeah. just bullshit hype. It wasn't bullshit it hype. It was real. And so I think it's obvious that now AI is clearly going to be a tool as impactful as mobile or open source backends or um, cloud computing. And then we'll see from there, right? Like LMs are clearly that useful. Yep. And so it's stupid to not think about how you can make your users more happy, more yep. productive. And again, I think without the tool. what's funny about this is you and I were in the room when OpenAI was created because yep. we were working at YC yep. with Sam yep. when we had YC Research. Yeah. And it was a nonprofit. It was meant to be an enabling technology. Exactly. The vision here, you were in the room, yes. it was to be a nonprofit so that all these startup flowers could bloom yes. and all these people you know, could be enabled to create yes. value. Yes. And so again, I think sometimes people are afraid of a narrative that opening, I, hey, maybe, maybe that will happen, but like the vision was about creating the technology yes. that will be harnessed by other people and by ideally creating AGI yes. was kind of what his goal was, yes. as opposed to I want to create AI powered CRMs and I'm going to destroy every yeah. startup that's going to create AI powered no. CRMs. No. That was not what we understood. No. no. Right? No, no, no. I think what's interesting as well when you think about this game is that like there are very, very, very well paid people, and you were pointing this out, very well paid people who are leaving their jobs and who are starting startups right now because they believe that LLMs are a powerful tool. Yeah, the way I think about this is opportunity cost and life. Yeah. There's people that, I, that I've been funding and they have a great job and they actually like their job. Yeah. They and they're money. choosing to leave because they know at this moment in history, because they become domain experts at AI, yeah. that this is the moment to do a startup. Like this is, this is that, yes. imagine if you worked on, I don't know, cloud computing for years. Yeah. And then all of a sudden Amazon Web Services comes out. You're like, oh. You'd be like, oh, this is my, yeah. <laughs> they're calling me in. This is yeah. my moment in time. Yes, yes. And so it's really cool to see these people with all this vast domain expertise that they did before this stuff was cool, yeah. realize that this is the moment in time to work on this stuff. Well, and I think that we see a second group of people too. And I feel like those are the people who got the first iPhone when the App Store came out and said, I'm going to build an app. Yeah. And it was weird because at that moment, everyone had zero years of experience. That's exactly right. Apps. Well, <laughs> remember the Brex founders, what they did when they were like 15 was jailbreak iPhones. Remember yeah. all the kids that were doing jailbreaking? Yeah. Like this was like a rite of passage yeah. to be into this stuff and learn yes. about it because no one knew anything about it. So I think there's like two sets of smart people who are really attracted to this, right? Really, really smart people who love CS, who are like, this is an amazing tool and I'm going to learn as much about it as possible because most people don't know anything about it. I can get on the ground floor. And then people who have been doing ML for a couple years who were like, oh my God, like all of the things I imagined were going to happen are starting to happen. I can predict the future. That's yep. a perfect time to do a startup. I think what's tricky though is that there are people who don't think that this is a good time. Yep. The people who aren't really in to CS don't really, don't, aren't really excited by the power of LLMs. And people who don't have experience with ML at all and those are the people who just want to make money. And I think what's interesting is in the last couple of cycles, those people have been very attracted to the startup world. How do I make money fast? Yeah. Those people are not being attracted to this. I think that's what makes our job so much fun because like working in people who want to make startups fast, might make money fast in startups, it's, it's, it's not a great group those of are, folks. Those are harder office hours. Harder, harder. <laughs> when we're like, yeah, it's, it'll just take a decade. They're like, no, no. Why don't I do my ICO or something? Yeah. Um, whereas like this group of people, I mean, it reminds me when people were nerding out about Ruby back in the day, yeah. like, oh wow, like I'm just excited about what I can build. 
and when you think about it, this is a perfect time where if you're a creative person and you're an ambitious person, yeah. you can do really cool stuff. And we, yes. we saw this with the iPhone. Yes. You so can blow people's minds. Well, again, Uber yes. would not have made sense without the iPhone. Nope. And so to me, it's less obvious that it's, everyone's going to build open AI competitors. I am worried that all the low hanging fruit ideas, open AI will just be able to do well enough. Yes. But if you go deeper yeah. to second level insights, a la Uber after a consequence of the iPhone. Yep. The second order effects like this from LLMs yes. are going to be amazing. You get well, what I mean? It's like, it wasn't the obvious I shit. I try an analogy on you, right? Like fart apps. Remember when I was making fart apps? Well, that no, wasn't the big business. I would argue <laughs> that maybe the analogy here was the like, it was obvious that maps were going to come to the phone. Yeah. It wasn't obvious that Uber was going to come, right? I agree. And, I, and so I never it was like, never, never would have imagined. <laughs> and so I definitely think that if you can think second order, and I'll even, I'll even be charitable. I think sometimes to think second order, you think first order. It's, it's okay if your thing starts as a toy. Like when people are like, oh, this is a thin wrapper on OpenAI, I always laugh because I'm like, okay, is that the destination or the starting point? Yeah. If it's a starting point, oh, it reminds me of the old Dropbox as a thin wrapper on top yeah. of uh, AWS, <laughs> yeah. on top of S3, yeah. right? Yes. Oh, I can build this in a weekend. I can build this in a weekend <laughs> is a sure sign that the person doesn't know what the fuck they're talking about. <laughs> so I will say that, like, you know, if you are absorbing, if your thing is a thin wrap, thin wrapper, on OpenAI to start, and you're absorbing hate, ignore those fuckers. Yeah. Like, that's silly. Like, understand that many good things started like toys, and like, make something that customers really love. Yeah. This is a time to be optimistic. Yeah. This is a time to build cool stuff. Yeah. And this is not a time to cargo cult, as I said earlier. So superficially no. copying AI stuff just because no. it's hot or raising money. Don't do that. No. But if you can really solve customer problems in an amazing way, yeah. this is the time. Yeah. And I, and I think the last point we'll give is that I think that until these big companies solve AGI, it's going to be their first, second, and third goal. And so using the existing tools to make people's lives better, their businesses better, it's not on their list. Like getting AGI, one, two, and three most important goals. So that's a huge opportunity for everyone. So look, in conclusion, yes. unless you actually believe in the short term, AGI will be created by OpenAI that will do all the things that's possible for us to predict. Yes. OpenAI is not going to kill all the startups. No. <laughs> and there's plenty of room to innovate. And maybe we would say that the tools that exist now and the LLMs that are being made available, this could be a explosion of new amazing startups. This could be the moment that we've been waiting for since mobile. Yep. Where people can actually do cool new things and they, they aren't just cargo cart culting. So uh, this should be a moment where everyone's excited, except for the people on Twitter. They're never excited. <laughs> All right. Thanks much, Dalton. Thanks.